Alright guys, this is another gray, gloomy, muggy, buggy, late summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. At least the temperature has cooled off a little bit here at Bugs in a Jar Farm here. In the Finger Lakes of upstate New York, that would be, <coughs> we have stumbled into a Friday. I believe it is Friday, August 27th, 2021, so since it is Friday, I have to, uh, well, every day I have to get back to harvesting probably another hundred ears of this absolutely gorgeous, delicious, garden-fresh, organic, GMO-free Silver Queen corn. Uh, which will probably end up being fed to the pigs or something. I cannot give this corn away, all of this talk about global food insecurity. I'm getting fed up to hear with hearing uh, people whine about there's nothing to eat when uh, I am throwing away probably one ton of uh, homegrown organic vegetables because nobody wants any of them. Anyway, if you do want some, uh, come on down to Bugs in a Jar Farm, and I know there's several people listening to this that are within 30 minutes of me right now, and they will not come down either for all of this free food. Uh, but anyway, that's another rant, this global in food insecurity. A rant's a rant for another day because it is Friday. And that means it's time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we open up the mongabay.com uh, newsletter for our weekly laundry list of uh, all the various assaults against this collapsing planet unfolding in the past seven days while the rest of us, I don't know, have been talking about the D word. Uh, Anyway, where are Rhett Butler and the boys and girls? Where is Rhett going to start us off today? <coughs> want to get past the hopium. I'm thinking what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, start a hopium magical thinking roundup. I'm just going to lump all of this to all of this hopium. Maybe Saturday. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick one day a week just to put all of this uh, greenwashing, hopium, apocalyptic crap uh, into one roundup. And uh, it's just, uh, anyway, Rhett Butler is guilty as anybody uh, of the hopium peddling, which I don't understand. Rhett Butler knows as well as any human being on this planet uh, how completely hopeless the situation is and uh, we're gonna start I don't know okay let's just once and for all well just the latest uh, this raging debate <coughs> which you will see at COP26 uh, about burning forest to make energy about this whole, as far as I'm concerned, closed debate whether burning down this planet's forest is a way to save the planet. Of course, Bill McKibben being one of the biggest cheerleaders of burning down the planet to save the planet. Uh, so this is, we're just going to kick off with this raging debate about burning forests to make energy. A major political and environmental dispute is coming to a boil in the run-up to COP26 in Scotland this November as the European Union and the forest industry, the European Union and the forest industry, which has the EU and uh, half of the planet in its pocket, push forest biomass, otherwise known as turning living trees into wood pellets and burning them to make electricity, 
claiming the science shows that biomass is sustainable and produces zero emissions. Forest advocates and many scientists sit squarely on the other side of the argument, providing evidence, I would say providing ironclad proof that biomass, meaning burning down forest, is destructive to forests. Well, do you think that burning down a, a, a forest is destructive to forest and biodiversity? It is, in fact, dirtier than coal and destabilizing to the climate. Moreover, these people with brains say the carbon neutrality claim is an accounting error that greatly increases carbon emissions. Yes, these views collided in July when the, Euro <coughs> when the European Commission called <coughs> for only minor revisions to its legally binding Renewable Energy Directive in regard to biomass policy as part of the EU's Green Deal. Critics say the plan, if approved by the EU Parliament next year, will fail to protect global forest from the wood pellet industry. Here, Manga Bay offers a review of the science on both sides of the biomass debate, debate summarizing key studies and reports and providing links to primary sources uh, for enhanced insight into these complex issues. Um, anyway, so you can go on mangabay.com and uh, dive in. If you have any lingering doubt, if you are still in the Bill McKibben camp that uh, burning forest to save the planet uh, is a path to sustainable clean green energy, go over here and let Rhett Butler disabuse you of that notion. <clears throat> And guys, once again, I'm only going to be able to touch on half of these. I love, uh, I love their uh, faux pas here. <clears throat> Not even Rhett Butler can uh, keep track of how many of these joke COP climate meetings. I love this. As COP 15 approaches, well, Rhett, COP 15 was years ago. I think you're 11 COP meetings behind, but you know, COP 15, COP 21, COP 26, COP 52, it makes no difference. I think he meant to say, as COP 26 approaches, 30 by 30 becomes a conservation battleground, just like the biomass. <clears throat> In July, the United Nations released a draft of its post-2020 global biodiversity framework, which called for 30% of Earth's land and sea areas to be conserved. Known as 30 by 30, I guess this actually belongs in the hopium magical thinking roundup rant, but since I'm already into it, I guess I'll just finish. Known as 30 by 30, the plan has drawn fire from indigenous rights activists and their allies who say that it could prompt mass evictions, meaning mass evictions of planet nibblers is what they're talking about. <coughs> Earlier this month, 49 foundations sent a joint letter to the plan's drafters saying a focus on creating new protected areas, meaning protecting the other 10 million or so species of earthlings humans share the planet with would, quote, lead to human rights abuses across the globe. 30 by 30 is exposing fault lines in the modern conservation movement over who should control biodiversity protection and where funding should be directed. And guys, uh, th this is a whole nother one of these uh, divide and conquer debates. 
Uh, and I don't mind saying which side of the debate I am on. Uh, it take a wild guess which side of the debate Sam Mitchell is on whether humans, uh, even these uh, noble savages, should be allowed to uh, continue, should they be lumped in, I guess, with our fellow earthlings and given the status of a, a gorilla or a chimpanzee, or should they be considered humans? I consider them to be humans. And uh, I think that we should be able to give 30% of this planet to the other 10 million uh, of our fellow Earthlings we share this planet with and make them human exclusion zones. <clears throat> In this case, planet nibbler exclusion zones. But anyway, that's the side of this raging debate that I am on. Okay. Let's just get to their regular, uh, their, their regular news uh, reel here. We're just going to go down the list. Let's go over to Borneo. You will not believe this one. Dam builder denies responsibility as log jam chokes river in Malaysian Borneo. Tons of wood debris has clogged up <coughs> the Bala and Ray. Rejang Rivers in Sarawak, Borneo. The log jam originated in the headwaters of the Bala, where a hydroelectric dam is currently under construction and logging activity is being carried out nearby. Yes, but the state owned utility building the dam denies responsibility, pointing to more logging upstream. Yes. What is going on with giant anteaters? It is what's going on with giant anteaters is the same thing going on with every one of our fellow earthlings on the planet. Loss of forest turns up the heat, literally, on giant anteaters. A new study shows that giant anteaters, which are relatively poor at regulating their own body temperature, need forest patches as thermal shelters. It found that giant anteaters living in less forested habitats tended to travel farther to access the shrinking forest fragments as a refuge from extreme temperatures. Yes, do you think so? The shrinking forest patches the little dog and I are going to need to retreat to a forest patch ourselves here. Let's see if we can uh, get through this rat. Speaking of forest patches, let's go over to Western Australia. Carving up my country, land clearing reignites the fracking debate in Western Australia. A recent data analysis shows that a single energy company has cleared 14,000 square kilometers, otherwise known as 8,700 square miles of vegetation for roads in the Kimberley, the northernmost part of Western Australia, for fracking and mining exploration. Yes, the exploration occurred on First Nations territory, including those of the Yawunu people. Uh, despite years of talk, yes, years of BS and greenwashing from government departments and industry, there is still no certainty about the rights of the traditional owners to approve or veto such developments. Yes, conservationists also warn this fracking exploration will enable the spread of feral cats into the area who prey on native and endangered animals. 
one of Australia's most pressing biodiversity issues is the uh, as the feral cats. All right, <clears throat> you will not believe this. Let's climb on board one of Ghana's trawlers. Yes, let's climb aboard a trawler off the coast of Ghana, sub-Saharan Africa, where we find illegal fishing and claims of human rights abuses. Wow. A report and video published by the Environmental Justice Foundation describes a range of human rights abuses, not to mention fish abuses experienced by fisheries crew members uh, on board industrial vessels operating in Ghana's waters. Um, according to the report, most of the vessels off, you know, fishing off the coast of Ghana are involved in illegal fishing practices, including the use of undersized nets, the catching and dumping of juvenile fish, and the transshipment of large quantities of fish that should be reserved, you know, for planet nibbling fishermen. Yes, which all which together is helping to push Ghana's fishery to the point of collapse. Human rights abuses are prevalent on industrial fishing vessels across the world and tend to be entwined with issues of illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. All right, from off the coast of Ghana, uh, let's see, let's go over to Indonesia where we find calls mount for <coughs> Indonesian ban on new palm oil plantations to be extended. Yeah, like there is a ban on uh, new palm oil plantations in Indonesia. <coughs> Calls are mounting from within the government and within civil society for Indonesia's ban on new oil palm plantations in force since 2018, and you see how successful they have been, are set to expire this September. They argue the moratorium has brought some improvement to the plantation industry, which has long been associated with the deforestation, uh, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> At the same time, they say the existing moratorium has failed to address a litany of issues and renewing it will give the government more time to make the necessary progress Please. Okay. <coughs> wow. We're going to head over to Sub Saharan Africa. We're going to go over to Kenya to find this absolutely jaw dropping headline Kenya port and ship breaking, whatever ship breaking projects means, threaten livelihoods and the environment. Plans to build an industrial fishing port and a shipyard along the Wasini Channel off Kenya's coast threaten the livelihoods of local communities who depend on fishing, seaweed farming, and ecotourism. Underwater drilling carried out as part of the proposed port last November damaged coral reefs while drilling for the shipyard destroyed seaweed crops. Community members say they fear even more devastating impacts once the project, which also include a smelting plant, gets underway in earnest. I'm gonna take a wild guess. This is part of China's uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Just a wild guess on uh, my part. Okay. 
I think the next one might be one for the uh, the Hopium Roundup. Okay, I have never thought of this before. You know, this this story I'm ready to mention, guys, is every week. This is why I depend on Rhett Butler to be my man with eyes on, nose on the ground. I never would have understood this. Uh, if Rhett Butler in Manga Bay had not explained it to me, I would have been completely unaware of this. And I'm sure you would have been too. Did you realize, sit down now for this news, did you realize that illegal mining in Colombia's Amazon threatens indigenous communities? Yes. In June 2021, indigenous communities observed boats carrying out illegal gold mining in the Caqueta River in the Colombian Amazon. Yeah, satellite images showed as many as 19 boats in the area that month. Uh, research shows mercury contamination from gold mining has contaminated indigenous communities in the river basin. Yes, researchers and indigenous advocates warn the influx of miners into the remote Colombian Amazon may compromise the health and well-being of uncontacted people who depend on isolation for their way of life. Now guys, I don't know, I wasn't there. Uh, I just wonder how many people piloting the boats were indigenous people from the river basin. I, you know, I only have this to base it on, you know, when I was down there in the Peruvian Amazon at, a, at an indigenous reserve, at the Amaracari Indigenous Reserve in the Peruvian Amazon uh, 12 years ago covering this story. Uh, I found to my uh, utter shock, but not at all surprise, I guess, that the, the people actually on the ground carrying out the mining, you know, dumping all of this mercury and stuff, were the Indians living in the indigenous reserve. Now, I'm not saying this is the case here. Uh, I'm just taking a wild guess that, uh, you know, the snowflake media is just uh, conveniently ignoring the, uh, the inconvenient truth that many of the people working in their slave-like conditions are indigenous people from the area. Uh, now, of course, they're not the ones making the money from the gold going out but you better believe they are lining up for the, the, to, to become slaves to this system. Anyway, enough of the noble savage rant for today. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Let's see. <clears throat> We're going to go down to South Africa at the very bottom of Sub-Saharan Africa. For this headline, you will not believe this either. <clears throat> Nature takes a beating. Nature takes a beating after chemical explosion in South African civil unrest. This is how Mad Max is going to uh, the effect nature. Unknown quantities of toxic agricultural chemicals spilled into an estuary on the Indian Ocean following an arson attack on a warehouse during civil unrest and looting in South Africa in July. The fire <coughs> burned for 10 days exposing thousands of people to clouds of poisonous fumes and soot. Yes, with poor communication of the health risks to affected communities, 
thousands of fish and other aquatic organisms were killed by a torrent of turquoise effluent that flowed from warehouses which held as many as 1,600 different types of chemicals. The incident has exposed significant weaknesses in the regulation of hazardous installations along with major flaws in emergency and pollution control response by South African authorities. Anybody uh, at this point failing to understand what Mad Max is going to look like, uh, you know, go to Sub-Saharan Africa today for your postcard of what the planet is going to look like as Mad Max unfolds all over this planet. Right here. I anybody failing to understand the dot connecting between societal collapse and ecological collapse, it's right here in this story. <clears throat> Is there anybody who is failing to understand this? Sancho Panza, are you failing to understand this? Okay. Uh, wow. <clears throat> you will not believe this one. You will not believe this one. Guys, anyone who uh, ever says uh, you never learn anything on Collapse Chronicles and Manga Bay. <clears throat> wow. Did you realize, folks, <clears throat> that a new highway cutting through the heart of Borneo is poised to be, quote, very, very bad. Hmm. <clears throat> yes. With Indonesia planning to shift its capital, <coughs> you know, from the Mad Max hellhole of Jakarta to the Bornean province of East Kalimantan, infrastructure development pressures on the island have intensified. Neighboring Malaysia is adding new stretches to the Pan Borneo Highway to capitalize on spillover economic benefits, while within in Indonesia, East Kalimantan's development gains are expected to trickle to other provinces through the transboundary highway. While the new roads might spur economic development in remote villages, they also carve into protected areas in the heart of Borneo, opening them up for resource extraction. <clears throat> in particular, the new roads could fast track development of a new oil palm <coughs> belt. Development of a new oil palm belt with disastrous consequences for the wildlife and indigenous peoples of Borneo and for global climate, experts say. Wow, how a new road being rammed through the heart of Borneo could be, quote, very, very bad. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go over there to this country I prefer to call Burma. Deforestation surge continues amid a deepening uncertainty in Myanmar, otherwise known as, Bur as Burma. Uh, satellite data show a huge surge in forest clearing in northern parts of the Tanatheral region in southern Burma, including within a protected area. Major drivers of deforestation are <clears throat> Can we say 
commercial oil palm and rubber plantations, small scale agriculture, can you say planet nibbling, planet eating, commercial oil palm and rubber plantations, planet nibbling, small scale agriculture, and of course all of this infrastructure development we were talking about in the last article. <clears throat> In the region south, forest loss is affecting the already fragmented habitat of globally threatened pittas and tigers, among other rare species. Meanwhile, activists say the political turmoil following last February's military coup has effectively halted all community-led forest protection work. Do you think so? Uh, well, this sounds like uh, bad news, but actually, this uh, this uh, this is an example of uh, uh, even this story is hopium. Half. Of, we're going to go back to Latin America, although this is true for anywhere else on the planet. Half of burned forests across Latin America do not survive. New study finds, yes, half my uh, culo. <clears throat> Researchers monitor the forest of 22 Latin American countries from 2003 to 2018 and analyze their resistance to fires. According to the study, 48% of these ecosystems that suffered burning in the year 2003 were wiped out in subsequent years. The study found that all forests, meaning 100% of forests in Latin America, are now susceptible to fires with severe implications for greenhouse gas emissions and biodiversity. Yes. Uh, what is, what do you think happened to a stranded dugong in Indonesia? Otherwise known as a manatee. Stranded manatees, two of them, Two stranded manatees in Indonesia cut up for traditional medicine. Yes. Oh, I'm sad. One, only one of them survived as the other one was butchered for traditional uh, medicine. With conservation authorities unable to get to the site due to corona panic lockdowns. Some locals took the advantage of the corona panic lockdown to cut up one of the dugongs and distributed the parts for use in traditional medicine. Yes. Uh, anyway. Would you believe, here we go again with the sky is blue headlines. You will not believe this. Indonesian pulpwood firms, otherwise in, in, an Indonesian pulpwood firm, the entire existence of an Indonesian pulpwood firm is to go into a area of rainforest and turn it into pulpwood and toilet paper and the rest. Indonesian pulpwood firm told to protect peat are doing the opposite. Pulpwood companies in Indonesia are continuing to plant on degraded peatlands inside their concessions despite being required to protect and restore these ecosystems, a new report shows. Yes, the report focuses on 16 pulp and paper producers and found that how many of the 16, how about 16 of these 16, 
are in violation of peat protection and rehabilitation regulations. Yes. Anyway, let's go over back to Malaysia. They safeguarded nature, but now Malaya's mawmen face eviction for an eco resort. Members of the Mamen indigenous community in Malaysia are fighting on, fighting an attempt to evict them to make way for the expansion of a beach resort. Yes, uh, the notice from the state government says the land in question belongs to the government and has threatened legal action if they don't leave. Yes. Out with the indigenous, in with a new beach resort. Uh, okay. We have the end of a deforestation tracker for Brazil's Cerrado. Quote, an incalculable loss. For 20 years, Brazil's space agency, INPEI, has run a program monitoring deforestation and fire risk in the Cerrado Savannah, a global biodiversity hotspot. But that program may be, read, will be shut down at the end of this year due to a lack of money. Yes. Scientists, civil society groups, and the soy industry uh -huh, have all spoken out against allowing the program to end. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the soy industry is real concerned. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I know the little dog is heading into heat stroke. And so am I, so uh, I don't even have time to read the uh, latest update on global seagrass, uh, the collapse of global seagrass, which, uh, you know, is being looked at as the lead cause of all the manatee deaths in Florida as seagrass collapses. Anyway, before I collapse from heat stroke, uh, out here on this wet bulb day that's forming here. Uh, I need to wrap this up. I'm looking at my cornfields. I'm trying to gauge how much the deer or the bears or whatever. Although I'm pretty much just feeding my cornfield. Let's Sancho. He was on it at 1.30 in the morning. He heard the marauders in my in my cornfield, but as I say, since no human has any interest in, in uh, this delicious uh, thousand years of uh, organic corn, uh, I'm just gonna let the deer have it, I guess. Get out there and enjoy your organic cornfield while you still can. Bye guys. All right, little dog, you can head to a forest fragment. And I've got to get out and uh, get to work expanding my bog garden. I have big plans to make this look like Golden Gate Park. I'm going to put the vision into the bog garden while I still can. Bye, guys.